I, I can guarantee, I'm going to make a, a prediction right now, that over the next 10 years, I guarantee the lake levels will go up, and I guarantee that they will go down. <laughs> I, so I can't tell you when or where or how much or how that's going to affect anything, but I can make that guarantee. Um, and I'm pretty safe in doing that, I think. So it's wonderful to see so many familiar faces, too, people that I've worked with over the years on a lot of issues related to Great Lakes, related to groundwater, a whole variety of things. Um, I, I know this is a great passionate issue for so many people. It is a great passionate issue for Michigan. It is a great passionate issue for, for all of us in the Great Lakes. Uh, in some ways, I have one of the easiest jobs in, in the state. So I'm going to just do a quick show of hands. How many of you love the Great Lakes? All right, thank you. I'm done. I, uh, th that's a wonderful position to start with. This is something that not just, we say it defines us, we, you know, we show the hand, we love the hand, but this is in our core, this is in our psyche, this is in our soul. So we don't always stop to take a look back and look at things like, we, we talk a lot about the threats and the stressors, we, we look at the dynamic part of the systems, but we also need to stay, take a step back and look. If this was an asset in your portfolio, think about it that way. If you had the Great Lakes in your investment portfolio, what would you do with that portfolio to make sure you're getting the most benefit out of that portfolio? So I want to spend a little bit of time very quickly, very high level, and just frame some economic pieces. And I want to do that in, in four different ways. One is I want to look backwards a little bit and just talk very briefly about some legacy issues that we're still trying to clear out of the system after many, many years. Um, a little bit about the threat, but really more from an economic perspective. We touched on it and then try to answer these two unanswerable questions. In fact, the third question is, is, is really unanswerable in general sense. What's the value of the Great Lakes? What are they worth? They're both invaluable and uncalculatable, but there are parts of them that do generate great economic capacity. So we look at them in that way, and, but we also look at them in the fact that I love them, and that's hard to put a dollar value on. So I'm, not, I'm gonna talk about economics, but it's not strictly Great Lakes in economic terms only. There are many other aspects, including the fact that we love them, that are so dear to us. And then what does an investment in Great Lakes start to look like, or what, what are the, some of the characteristics of that? So the first piece, let's look backwards a little bit. Let's look backwards in time. One of my favorite things to think about is, think about the sediment as it comes down the river, as it comes down into our harbors, that comes into the Great Lakes. The sediment is sort of the memory of our history. The sediment reflects the choices, the social choices we made over time. And many of those choices in the 40s, 30s, 20s, 50s, 60s were not the healthiest choices. We put a lot of stuff in our water that ended up in our sediments, that has ended up in our harbors and our lakes that we're still dealing with. There has been a significant economic cost that we are now dealing with, and we'll talk about that. One of the, uh, one of the, one of the programs that we, that we look to here is called the Areas of Concern Program. Areas of Concern were really some of the worst of the worst places or so designated in Michigan in around the late 70s and into the 1980s, trying to get these places um, back to economic health and back to ecological health and back to functioning health. So we have 14 of these in Michigan. You can see them on the map. I think these slides are going to be made available, if I'm not mistaken. So you can look at them a little bit more in depth. Um, and at each of these sites, various impairments or various things that were wrong in those sites were listed. So every site has from one to, to maybe 12 or 13 impairments. Um, and the trick over the next, over our past history and, and, and looking forward are to take these out one at a time to improve the impairments, to take the impairments and fix them. Whether that's removing contaminated sediments out of the system, fixing habitat, fixing the organisms that live in the sediments because they can't live there now, and how does that affect fisheries populations and the health of bird populations and drinking water quality, a whole variety of issues. This is not an inexpensive program. How many of you think this is not an inexpensive program? <laughs> Good. Um, and for many, many years, we did not make as much progress, at least on the physical side. A lot of study early on, a lot of analysis, what do we need to do, what do we need to clear out of our system from the legacies of our past. Um, but once we, once we reached a turning point when additional dollars came into the system under the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, have really started to see some significant project. 
uh, Rick Hoberla in our office. Rick, why don't you put up your hand? Manage this program for the Office of the Great Lakes and for the state of Michigan. So he and his team get a lot of credit working with our community partners. This is a program to work with our partners to try to, in the communities, to clear these issues of legacy contamination. And they are making some stellar progress right now. Um, so the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative is a federal program. It is, uh, its first year was a $475 million infusion of money into the Great Lakes region and about $300 million over the last couple of years. So well over a billion dollars has been reinvested back in the Great Lakes just to clear issues of the past. We need to clear issues to make our harbors healthy, to make our communities healthy, to make our beaches healthy, to make our rivers healthy. The more economic capacity comes with the healthier our system is. Those are necessarily tie barred together. Um, so issues of large investment in the Great Lakes over decades, focused cleanup in these areas of concern, and ultimately removing these impairments and ultimately removing these from the list of impaired places in Michigan. Great Lakes Restoration Initiative is important, and we need to continue to advocate at the federal level. Our, our, our federal um, partners have been very supportive of making sure that we have this tool available to us to go after legacy contamination issues. <laughs> this just is a map of where in Michigan several hundred, Rick, I can't remember the number, 200 and some million dollars over that, of that billion dollars alone has been spent in Michigan. Um, in, in all of these places, this is an interactive map. You can go to the Great Lakes Commission's website, click on a dot, and see what was done in each of those areas. I'm not going to go through all the projects. But it has been stellar. It has been stellar for our communities that are seeing the benefits of this restoration perspective. And we want this to continue. So part of our economic his future is attending to our economic past. And part of that economic past is making sure that the choices we made are cleared from our systems and our sediments and our harbors and our rivers. That's where it resides, and, and we need to make sure that we're moving that ahead. So the next piece we talked about already, and I'm not going to spend a lot of much, much time on it, but is forward-looking threats or existing threats, invasive species. Three primary pathways these species have gotten into our systems are through hydrologic connections, waterways that connect to each other that allow aquatic organisms to move from one place to the next. Mississippi River into the Great Lakes, that type of a thing. Shipping has another has been another big vector of invasive species through ballast water. Um, and then you may not think about this, but another one that we really need to be very attentive to is organisms in trade. I can go on the internet now. I can buy plant material from Madagascar. I can put exotic species into my aquariums, for instance. And, and where those end up, I'm not sure necessarily over time. We have to be very thoughtful about how we're looking at organisms in trade, whether it's the bait industry, whether it's, whether it's the other, other types of places. Species have come in through multiple doors, and we have to be careful. Anderson Economics, a Lansing-based economic, East Lansing-based economics firm, not too long ago did an economic assessment of the costs of invasive species in the Great Lakes. And I don't think you touched on this at all. But that was estimated fairly conservatively at about $100 million per year that it's costing the eight Great Lakes states, I don't think it was provinces even, I think it was the eight Lake Great Lakes states, costing us to manage the consequences of invasives getting in. We have to be more diligent not to let invasives in because there's economic consequence to that, ecological consequence, social, ethical consequence to that. And we have to be very careful of that. Um, so there are some tools for detection and management, and I'm not going to go through those because I, I, I think uh, I think we've touched on those briefly. But I would, did want to talk about sort of the economic consequence side of invasive species and how that's one of the forward-looking threats that we have to be attentive to. So let's talk a little bit briefly about the economic value. We don't often stop and think what's the economic value of the Great Lakes. And it's very hard to distinguish the economic value of the lakes themselves from Michigan's overall economy, from Michigan's overall you know, perspective. Michigan boaters spend about $3.9 billion each year. It's a big part of Michigan's recreational history. We need to be open for business, right? Great Lakes define us, and part of the way they define us is we get out on our boats, big and little boats, sail and power boats, paddle boats, the whole variety of recreation in Michigan here, and 51,000 jobs, give or take, a few. Um, and I'm not going to go through all the lists, but obviously fishing is a big dominant industry in Michigan that's very specifically Great Lakes and water dependent. Sport and commercial fisheries alone in the Great Lakes are 
roughly around $7 billion industry. A spectacular economic driver for our region. Lots of recreational boats, 600 parks throughout our region, 600 parks that are generating enormous economic capacity, attracting people in, not just spending money, but also people looking around saying, hey, that's maybe a place where I also want to come and live, <coughs> right, as an attractant for our region. And then hunting and as another big component of Michigan's economics, with, with some of that hunting being waterfowl-based and Great Lakes-based. Shipping is a dominant piece of what we look at as part of the Great Lakes economic picture. On the Great Lakes in general, we're talking about 34 plus billion dollars worth of economic activity from a healthy shipping industry. Now, low water levels have some effect on that. For every inch of water we lose off the Great Lakes, ships have to load a little bit less. And, and they have a formula for that, and I can never remember the formula. So there are economic consequences of lower water levels on the shipping industry. There are many other ways, and I'm not going to go through them all, that economics play. Property values, are property values different on water than not on water? Right? Drives a different tax perspective from our local communities. Drives a different desire in local communities. So property values. Aquaculture. And on this, I put agriculture. I see my agricultural friends in the back, so here, here's to you. But agriculture, this specifically Gray Lakes related. For instance, fruit industry is very much a consequence of being in and around the lakes. Um, grapes. There's a, there's a number of others that are very kind of Great Lakes dependent. And then um, aquaculture is another component of a Great Lakes economy. Drinking water, of course. Water discharge, we use that for to carry waste. We just want to do that in a, in a, in a healthy way. Um, all the value of ecosystem services, the cleansing, the wetlands, all the, the services that we derive can be monetized at some level. And I'm not going to go through all the studies that monetize little components. Part of the problem of answering the question, what's the value of the Great Lakes, is trying to go through the math on all of these components and having it make sense. The fact is, they're inordinately valuable to us in many ways. Infrastructure, transportation, energy production, highly intensive along our water and along our water coasts. Um, One of the things that I want to point out, and it's in the really in the lower right hand corner here, this is a this is a, a diagram I saw just cu a couple of days ago at a conference in Cleveland. And it shows if you take a look at the Great Lakes, US, Canada, Great Lakes, the whole Great Lakes region, and compare it to world economies, it's the fourth largest world economy. That should stun you. It, it shouldn't surprise you in one way, but it should also stun you in another. We are competitive as a region with Japan. Actually, we lie between Japan and Germany as an economic power. So the things that we can do within the region to drive our economics collectively as Great Lakes, not solely as Michigan, but collectively as the Great Lakes, add tremendous economic capacity to us and make us world competitive. Fourth largest economy in the world is embedded here, and we're in the middle of it. And so much of it is dependent on the lakes themselves, not just the consequence of the region, but the consequence of the region where the lakes are, as a trade driver, as a transportation driver. I thought that was a pretty spectacular statistic when I saw it. One of the studies shows that about 1.5 million jobs alone are attributable directly to the Great Lakes. Not indirectly, but directly to the Great Lakes. And again, I'm not going to go through the whole slide here. It just starts to highlight the actual economic importance of the lakes themselves as a key driver not just as a consequence of the Great Lakes region. Around 83 million people in the Great Lakes region contributed a quarter of our nation's exports. We are a powerful economic player on the world stage. I don't think we always think about ourselves like that. We're, we're Michigan and we export product, right? That sort of thing. But we're the Great Lakes and we really drive and compete in the world economy. So it's one of the things that we really need to continue to look at, especially as we look at Transboundary issues, trade issues, fluidity across our borders with Canada. I heard the other day that um, the, uh, car manufactured parts, sometimes to manufacture a car, sometimes that, that part or aspect has to cross the border three, four, five, six times in the production of that car. And each time that may have to come with an inspection. So how can we speed that process up? Do it in a healthy way, a safe way, but speed that process up and become economically competitive with the world. We have the opportunities here. We have the opportunities with supply chain and with logistics. 
with Michigan State being one of the greatest supply chain and logistics schools in the country. And then the last thing I'll point out is two studies over the last couple of years, one in 2007 done by Brookings. Many of you have seen this before. That says a $25 billion investment in the Great Lakes, and that may sound like a lot of money, but a $25 billion investment in the Great Lakes could return some $80 to $100 billion worth of benefits. That's a pretty good return on investment. As we look at clearing legacy issues, dealing with threats, creating healthy communities, creating healthy coastal areas, creating desirability of place, right, as economic drivers. So this, is a, this was an important point for the Great Lakes to start thinking about themselves in these larger economic terms. And, and a recent study that I came across in, in doing some work for this talk was a con Canadian study, not quite as sweeping as the Brookings study, but that talks about the economic return of, uh, of $2 for every dollar invested just in dealing with nutrients and nutrient management into the Great Lakes. So that was one small piece of the economic model they saw as an investment. And the other, the other piece in that study was a term return of up to $35 for every dollar invested in coastal wetlands. Coastal wetlands as drivers of healthy ecological function, fisheries, cleaning water, possibly some theories around the management of E. coli in, um, in, in healthy beaches with coastal lake systems. So there are economic benefits that flow from those ecosystem services too. So Great Lakes are a great place for investment. They're a great place for families. They're a great place for recreation. And they're a place that we love dearly and a place that we need to shepherd as we move ahead. So with that, I'll say thank you and we'll look forward to questions.